Stuttgart are a giant club in German football history. They are five times top league winners, including three Bundesligas, and they're also three time German Cup winners. Just six months ago, Stuttgart very nearly got relegated to the Bundesliga, just about avoiding it through a relegation playoff. Now, they are fighting to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in 15 years. But the man who has led this revival, and who we are going to focus on today, is Sebastian Hernes. We're going to look at Stuttgart's tactical approach, how it gets the best out of their players, and whether it's sustainable in the long term. But first, a little bit about Mr. Hernes himself. Sebastian was a professional footballer, typically playing reserve team football in Germany for the likes of Hertha Berlin and Hoffenheim. After retiring, he became a coach in the youth setups of both RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich, and the latter he became the reserve team manager of in 2019. Then came his first job in senior football management in Germany when he became Hoffenheim manager in 2020. But after two seasons at the club and finishing ninth in his second season, he parted ways. Stuttgart came calling in April 2023. They just sacked their manager and were sitting in the relegation playoff spots, which is 16th in the Bundesliga. He guided them away from relegation via the playoffs and currently has a 60% win rate during his period at Stuttgart, which is pretty good going. And just a side note, he also happens to be the son of Bayern legend and current president Uli Hoeneß. So what are the reasons behind Stuttgart's revival and why is Hoeneß such an important part of this? Well, first we have to look at how he sets up his team. Stuttgart either set up in a 4-4-2, or a 4-3-3, and both systems enable Stuttgart to play against both possession dominant teams and teams who prefer to counter-attack against them. This is shown in the fact that this is the 4-3-3 shape that Stuttgart used against Leverkusen, and this is the 4-4-2 shape that they used against Dortmund. You can see quite similar players, quite similar philosophies, just slightly different tactical tweaks. But what are Hernes's main principles that have led Stuttgart to this really impressive form so far this season? Well, they are a possession first side. They've completed the third most passes per 90 in the Bundesliga this season. They like to use their goalkeeper, Nubel, who's on loan from Bayern to help build out from the back. He'll often sit in between the two centre-backs to provide an option when they are building up. That's shown in the fact that Nubel's average distance from goal is the third highest in the Bundesliga this season. In possession, Stuttgart focus on retaining the ball in the middle third. That's shown in the fact that they have the second highest number of touches in the middle third in the Bundesliga this season. Centre-backs Anton and Zagadou, alongside the double pivot pair of Angelo Stiller and Atagan Kadazor, are all inside the top 15 for most touches in the middle third per 90 this season. Now that's quite a mouthful, but what it really shows is the fact that Stuttgart like to retain possession in that middle third and hope to probe through with through balls and players running in behind, which are two main things that we'll touch on in a second. Their very flexible attacking play focuses on creating chances in wide areas largely for pullbacks and crosses into the box. Their joint third highest for crosses into the penalty area per 90 this season in the Bundesliga, but they're the fourth lowest for total crosses. So it shows how they pick out those, uh, those opportunities very specifically to only have high quality crosses. And this chance creation works really well as Stuttgart have the second highest XG in the Bundesliga this season. We're gonna break down the tactics now into two separate areas defensive and attacking. We're going to start with defensive. This is the typical shape that you see from Stuttgart. This is against uh, Dortmund in the Pokal in the German Cup. And you can see typically they set up in this four, well, kind of four, two, four, four, two block, essentially. It's a mid block that typically focuses on staying quite narrow on the possession side. You can see here that the, the left back and the left midfielder are leaving quite a large gap in this area. More than happy to leave that space as they stay compact on the, on the side that Dortmund in this case have the ball to stop the ball going through the center of the pitch and being broken apart in that regard. And this narrowness from the left back and the left midfielder enables Stuttgart to stay uh, really compact on the right hand side of the pitch in this case and not allowing the ball through the middle is shown in that they have the second most tackles per 90 in the middle third of the pitch this season. So they do stop the ball really well from getting through that central mid block. The ball in this case goes back from Schlotterbeck into Hummels and that is the trigger for the press in this scenario. Undav makes the run forward into this position to press Hummels into moving that pass out to the, out to the right hand side. This over here is Chris Furyk, who's closing this space as Stuttgart generally trying to move over across to the left-hand side. You can see that Grassi isn't pushing over into here, which is quite an important part of how Stuttgart play in these scenarios. They like to push Dortmund, in this case, across to the right-hand side of the pitch to, to push them into quite difficult positions. And Grassi holds this area here to stop Hummels being able to play the ball into midfield or to have the easy pass out here to, to, um, to the other right hand side of centre back and it also means that Garassi can press up onto Hummels if he takes too long in that scenario. So they're holding loads of different uh, positions, Garassi's in that area to stop the ball going through the middle of the pitch and it really pushes Dortmund back into quite a difficult scenario. You can see that Undav then forces Hummels into playing that ball across onto the right hand side and all the team has moved up into this area, Garassi's holding his position there, Furyk has moved in to press that right handed side defender and it forces into an error. This Stuttgart press forces Dortmund into quite a difficult scenario. They either have to pump the ball and clear it or play it into midfield, which Chan does here. He plays it into here. And it's quite difficult because you have Stiller 
He's very close to them. His man, he, he's got three players who eventually hound him. And it's a really important part of how Stuttgart play. They like to keep this central part of the pitch really congested to the point where they will, will win, the back, win the ball back in these areas. And Stuttgart are really well coached into making the tackles at the right time. They have a really low foul rate, the fourth lowest in the Bundesliga, and have the second lowest number of yellow cards. So they really, this defensive shape really works to their strengths. And they're able to pull it off really well and not and not commit many fouls and turn the ball over and counterattack. And it really helps when you have this sort of system that works particularly well against this Dortmund side, forcing them into errors. In this case, when the ball comes into this centre midfielder here, he has to play it blind around the corner because you have three players in such a small, small area, plays the ball around the corner and still got to end up with the ball. And you can see the same scenario about 10 minutes later in this game where Hummels is again the trigger for the press for Stuttgart and it works again really well. You see Garassi is here curving his run to force Hummels to play the ball out wide. Undav is doing the similar thing to what we talked about Garassi doing earlier and he covers that area to stop the ball from Hummels, who I use this white colour, from playing the ball into that area or being able to play a pass long out into the midfield. So it's, it stops the ball from being progressed through that central area, like we said earlier, a really important part of how Stuttgart play. Hummels then takes a long time, he dithers on the ball, and decides to play a pass through into the central area. And we know, as I spoke about earlier, that Stuttgart are so strong in winning the ball back in that area. And of course they do win it. The centre-back Anton pushes up to create a 3v1, like we spoke about earlier, in the midfield, which they do win the ball back from. And as with most teams, Stuttgart do have a slight weakness when they are out of position, and that's the fact that they are slightly susceptible to long balls. So we said that they like to keep this area across on the left-hand side of the pitch free when the ball is on the other side of the pitch to keep that compactness in the centre. But of course, that leaves overloads. And as you can see here, you've got a 2v1 in this scenario. And it leaves high-quality players like Dortmund do have to pick out a pass to play it over and behind. And it is something they are susceptible to, but when you play so narrow and stop the ball from going through the centre of the pitch, it's something you do kind of give up. Now in build-up, they typically use that 4-4-2 shape. You have the four, the back four here. You can see Josh Wagnermann, who's the right back over here, slightly further pushed on. You've got the two central pivots. Undaf, who's dropped in from his typical striker position, which one of the strikers does tend to do. They swap between him and Grassi from doing that. And you have the two wide midfielders really stretching the pitch. And that's how you'll typically see Stuttgart set up when they have the ball. They like to be able to play balls into the centre, into the strikers. It's why you'll see one of them drop in like Undaf is there. But they also have the option to take the ball out wide into really a good technical players that they have on the wide a wide at uh, the flanks of either side. Now those two wide players, Enzo Milo and Chris Furick, have been really impressive so far this season. Furick is an incredible passer and carrier of the ball, has a third most successful take on so far this season in the Bundesliga, behind Florian Wirtz and Leroy Sané. I mean that's pretty good company. Both of them are really capable crossers, and we spoke about earlier, Stuttgart really rely on those high quality crosses and they come in for Serhu Garassi, who we'll come on to a little bit later. The off-ball movement throughout this Stuttgart team is very free and very flexible, and it gives them the, the opportunity to create space for other players, to create space for talented dribblers like Furik, Milo, even Undav, to take on their marker and turn the defence and make those runs in behind. Stuttgart ranked third in the Bundesliga for both attempted and successful take-ons per 90 this season. So it really shows how they're given the freedom to take the ball and run at the opposition. The use of the fullbacks is also really important when Stuttgart are progressing the ball. You can see here, as we, as we spoke about in, in the, in the build-up scenario, Josh Wagnermann is also quite an important part of this. In this particular instance, he makes a forward run into this area. He doesn't take the ball with him, but he creates space for other players. And that's a really important part of how Stuttgart play, particularly with those, those two wing-backs who are really good at carrying the ball as well. And it's kind of a a thing that you see across the, the front line and in the fullback so they're all really good carriers and you can see again here that Vanyuman over here is in a quite an advanced position and he tends to be the target of back post crosses back post runs that Chris Furyk will put in he has 3.23 touches in the attacking penalty area per 90 which is the 98th percentile for fullbacks in the top five leagues and he has 99th percentile level non-penalty xg 0.18 per 90 it really shows how he's an important part of the attacking threat in the box when he makes those back post runs and then we come on to the strike pair of Garassi and undav they've become a high level big man little man partnership but Hernes has identified a system that enables them to be much more than that. Undav, who you might know from his time at Brighton last season, is currently on loan at Stuttgart from them. And he's turned into a fantastic pressing forward in this system. He has the engine that works really well on this team and Hernes is really getting the best out of him. He has 9 goals and 3 assists from 8.9 xG this season. That is form that got him his first Germany cap. His partner Garassi is a bit of a journeyman. He has had 8 clubs in the last 9 years and cost Stuttgart 9 million euros in the summer. He has really good link-up play and hold-up play, which is shown in his high pass completion rates. 
and 17 goals so far this season makes them the second highest scorer in the league behind Kane but both are overperforming their stats by about 5.5 xg so it shows how he is that high a level of a finisher that he's matching Harry Kane's overperformance numbers it's really really impressive I have done a video a bit more in depth about Garassi's movement and his finishing uh, and I'll leave a link to that in the description and we said that flexibility was a really important part of how Stuttgart play and that is also given in the fact that there's very intelligent players in this team and they can make the most of the space that's given to them by the opposition. And in this case, it's the movement of the two wide midfielders that we spoke about that really creates this chance. So here you can see you've got Chris Furyk here and this is the right midfielder Enzo Milo. And he's made a run all the way from the other hand, from the, the right hand side. Chris Furyk's made a run to drag the defender out to create this space in the centre. Stoggart have the fourth highest through balls per 90 in the Bundesliga and they're really, really good at doing them. In this case, the left-back Mittelstadt plays the ball into this area for the on-rushing Milo. He then takes the ball, turns, and then plays the ball into Grassi, who also makes a run in behind. And then he runs in behind and sadly misses the chance. But it's all a chance created by runners off the ball and through balls. A really important part of our Stuttgart play and the really exciting facet to their game. And again, this is another example of how they use these through balls. In this case, it's Furyk on the ball. You've got three players making forward runs. It's a really exciting way of how Stuttgart play. It's against Leverkusen in this scenario, and they're counter-attacking a really, really good team to such effect. Furyk then cuts inside, uses the run of Milo, who takes the defender out to this, this hand side, and plays the ball through into Garassi, who's also making that forward run. Undav's made this run into this area, and it's all really smart attacking movement that these rotations of these players that Hernes enables enables this really, really smart attacking play. And one last final bit about the attacking play that Stuttgart do use is wide area overloads. And now Undav's a really important part of this on that right-hand side. He moves across into this area, as you can see him there. You have the right mid Milo and also Vanyaman in that area. He makes another forward run, as Stuttgart always do, and runs into this area and uses his power and his pace to get in that area and pass Grimaldo. We spoke about the importance of Grassi's box movement. In this case, it creates for another player. He moves out to this area, which pulls the centre-back with him. As you can see, he's made that slight feint the defender into that right-hand side to follow Grassi. Vanyman has basically three options. The pull back to the edge of the box, try and get it into Grassi, or play the ball to the edge uh, to Furyk, who's running at the back post, which he does play to, and he then scores. That really exciting and like technical football that you see when Stuttgart break from their kind of central rotations in the middle it's, su it's such an exciting team to watch in that they have they create opportunities so often and have th even three options in this scenario to create a chance and they do score that they do score from and it's really is credit to Hernes that he's been able to take this team who struggled so much last season and be able to make a few slight tweaks to be able to create a team that's creating chances all the time. However, as with any team, there are always going to be minor blips throughout the season. And Stuttgart have slightly been going through one recently. They've lost games without Garassi, who's been at AFCON with Guinea. They lost 3-1 to Gladbach and lost 3-1 to Bochum. The Bochum game itself was a bit of an outlier. It's one that you'd imagine four out of five times Stuttgart would win. They dominated possession, shots, XG, created more chances to win the game. Stuttgart made a defensive error, lost the game 1-0. But losing to Gladbach was slightly different. They were 1-0 down within 15 seconds, and that's always going to change how a team approaches the game. But in that game particularly without Garassi, it shows how some minor changes to the team, moving some players about, really dropped the quality quite a lot and makes it much harder for them to carry out Hernes's plans. They also did lose 3-0 to Bayern relatively recently, but again, it's Bayern against Stuttgart give the guy a break. They were 1-0 down early again to a Bayern team with such quality and then conceded from two set pieces, one of them being really heavily deflected. So I don't think you can really pin that down to Hernes and his tactics from a team that's performed so well in so many other games this season. But overall, things are going really well for Stuttgart and Sebastian Hernes. He's emerged as a really exciting manager whose tactics are based in simplicity, but are incredibly thought out and works so well to the attributes of the team and the player that he ha players that he has at his disposal. And he has so many players in the form of their lives. You see Garassi, you see Undav, you see Furyk. Most of the team are playing the best football they've ever played. And that can't just be coincidence. And I look forward to seeing how things might change in the future, maybe progress next season, because Undav will likely go back to Brighton. Garassi is being rumoured all the time to go to literally every, every club in existence. But Hernes is definitely one to watch out for in the future as a really exciting manager, especially since his dad currently runs Bayern. So it does see him being linked to Bayern quite a lot. But I would like to see him progress with this team, see how they, they start next season. And maybe we might see him at a slightly bigger German club in the future. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed learning about Sebastian. I hope you did as well. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in a video very soon. See you later.